Welcome to the GTN Show, and again, a happy new year to all of you. Yeah, we are delighted to be back, and very thankful to all of you for all your support over this past year and since we started GTN, because we swiftly passed the 300,000 subscriber mark over the festive period, which reminds me, because if you are watching this and you're not subscribed to the channel already, do make sure you do so by clicking on the subscribe icon just below this video or on our page. And if you want to be notified when each of our videos come out, hit that little bell icon on there too. Yeah, I mean, thank you all so much. We really do have a whale of a time here on the channel and we really are appreciative of all of you coming along for the ride. But the community as well is something that's really built up over time here and we are really thankful for that. But moving on to this week's show, what we're going to be tackling is those January and winter blues. So we've got five tips to help you get back on track and excited to train again. Now Fraser, I don't know about you, but my motivation to ride my bike or just train full stop has really hit rock bottom at the moment. Yeah, the January training blues can really hit a lot of us, especially here in the Northern Hemisphere where everything is just getting a little bit chilly, wet and possibly cold depending where you are. Yeah, it's not that exciting kind of thought to head out into that and that definitely does have an impact on me. But regardless of the weather, the race season is just so far away, so the amount of time and training required for that and how far away it is all just seems a bit overwhelming. And I know this sounds a bit deep and probably a bit over the top, but it's almost like I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, so it's just... <sighs> there, there, Mark. We will work through this and help you get through these January training blues. And in fact, we do have five tips to help you with getting over those blues. And the first up of those is to address that light at the end of the tunnel analogy that Mark's just been talking about and set yourself some goals or targets. And really that can start by just small day-to-day, step-by-step ones. Well, like getting out of bed. Yeah, something like that. But to be honest, that's not too far from the truth as far as I'm concerned at the moment, if I'm honest. But I was thinking along something more along the lines of changing your technique or thinking about altering your diet or perhaps starting to put in some long range or medium to long range goals or targets, you know, into February, March, maybe into April. That's always something nice to have a thing in the distance to get your teeth stuck into. Yeah, to be fair, I actually quite often aim to do a half marathon mm, in March. Do. Yeah, so it gives me a really nice target. It breaks up the winter months and like you say, gives me a target and a goal to work towards. Yeah, so talking about goals and targets, well, the next step on top of those is to periodize your training. Uh, yeah, this is probably the biggest mistake that athletes make, particularly so if you're uncoached and I guess you're just sort of picking and choosing your training. The problem is that you are essentially just aimlessly training week in, week out. And what you'll probably see, and very often we see this, is that people see improvements to begin with, they get very excited by that, and then they begin to plateau or even start to fall off the edge of the cliff and perhaps even picking up injuries, niggles, illness, and yeah, it really starts to go a little bit downhill. Yeah, now essentially without this periodization, you miss out on that ability to block your training out into stages or actual training blocks as such. And then without those essentially divided blocks of training, you can't get the recovery in between them either. And a really good way of managing these blocks of training is to think about focuses for each of one of them. So you might take a strength block, for example, or you might decide to focus on an endurance block as well. Or you could take another train of thought and go, well, I'm gonna focus on a particular discipline and make this my swim-based block. Yeah, it's a very good idea. And I'm gonna jump in here now with my next tip. And it's a pretty important one, in my opinion, and that is to remind yourself of why you do triathlon. Well, for me, I actually got into triathlon because I love the idea of cycling my bike to new places, exploring a bit. Same for running, I might see a hill or a mountain, and I'm like, I just want to run to the top of that. Um, and that really got me into triathlon as a whole. But it is very easy to get bogged down in the whole numbers and paces and sort of lose sight of that. So what I like to do at this time of the year is try and revert back to that and remind myself of why I do travel and try and do those sort of rides and runs again. Yeah, and that is a really good thing to try and keep doing throughout the year, but I guess less and less so as the year goes on. Now, moving on to our next tip, which is cross training. And a lot of people do like the idea of switching up the training and doing some other things. I mean, I know for my example in the past, I love to have gone skiing and I do love to try a bit of mountain biking too. Just things that really get you out of your comfort zone and keep you active. Yeah, and actually we've seen quite a few pros 
um, going skiing, well actually we see quite a bit of cross country skiing because that's really good for fitness, but we're seeing a number of the pros actually using um, what we call skinning. So it's putting uh, skins onto the bottom of the skis and basically powering their way up a slope with their skis on and then taking the skins off and enjoying them on the way down. So it's a really good way of making skiing a strenuous exercise. Yeah, I've done that once and it was great fun to try. Good friends of mine took me up uh, in Colorado once and it was great fun. But I guess what we're trying to drive out here is any type of alternative sport that you can do at this time of year is worth it. So please let us know in those comments down there below if there's anything that you like to do to give yourself some alternative training. And that takes us on to our next tip, which is try and give yourself something that you look forward to or treat yourself with. Yeah, now I'm not materialistic, but I am gonna put my hand up here and say that I definitely am a little bit more motivated when I have the opportunity to try out some new kit or put some new clothing on and head out the door. That definitely gets me going. I'm very excited to do that. Um, but like I say, that shouldn't be um, a motivator for you to always have a new kit or it's gonna be a very expensive cr I mean, career. I think I know why I can hit the spot here with Mark because I'm pretty much in the same boat as some new socks. There's nothing oh, yeah. better, you'll, you know, don't talk to us about socks because <laughs> we'll just keep going all day long. Nothing better than a fresh pair of socks to just feel like it's gonna be a good ride or a good run. Well, what's slightly cheaper for you is also just trying out something new. So maybe just a new route, mm -hmm. something on your doorstep that you never tried before, or perhaps just mix it up, drive to a destination, uh, drive to a location to start your ride or run from, doing a point to point, map something out. That's something I'm really enjoying doing at the moment. I'm having a lot of fun and that's, that's starting to get me out of the tour a little bit Yeah, more. just literally going, oh, I could maybe instead of going, I know I am terrible for being an absolute groundhog. I've got run loops and bike loops and I'll just go and do those run loops and I'll like them, but actually do it the opposite way around. I know that sounds really boring, but that's, that's suddenly, so different. Yeah, it really does. I mean, or just take the map and go, oh, what if I go this way instead of this way? And all of a sudden there actually is quite an awful lot more variance out there. But then it's not even just going outdoors that can be good, is it? Well, no, we can, if you've not already um, experimented with or tried out some indoor training, um, why not get yourself onto Zwift? And, we are uh, big fans of it. Here. Yeah, really good. Uh, there's a brilliant community on there, ride with others, have fun with others, train with others, or use a new training platform such as Training Peaks. Um, so start getting yourself on there. That can really motivate yourself by sort of having sessions planned in there and seeing the results come back from that. You can analyze things and whatnot. Uh, but anyway, moving on from there, there's five really good tips for you but we'd like to hear from you as to whether you struggle with the old January or winter training blues. It's a very simple yes or no. You can enter into that poll by clicking just up here. And we'd also love to hear from you guys as to whether you do struggle with anything over the winter or January yeah. and how you overcome them. So drop them in the comment section below. Right then, so now we are moving along to the results of our coveted GTN Awards that you may remember we discussed in our um, New Year's Day show, which was just the other week there. Now, we've got nine results for you here, and I'm gonna kick them off with the best race finish, which was, who can forget, Jess Learmonth and Georgia Taylor Bryan crossing the line together at the Tokyo Test event back in August. Very iconic one from this year. Yeah, definitely. So then we've got the uh, best female triathlete, which is Katie Zafaris, and we have the best male triathlete, which is none other than Jan Prudino. Well, I'm gonna come in there now with the best newcomer, and that went to Alex Yee. Uh, the most exciting race of the year, and that was the Ironman 70.3 World Championships. A good one. And the most unexpected result of the year as well, Voted by you was Gustav Edom, also at the 70.3 World Champs. Yeah, so then I'll come back in with the most innovative product of the year. It's one of my favorite words there, got it, didn't I? The Nike Zoom X Vapor Next Percent, or oh, Vaporfly Next Percent, should I say, sorry, Nike. Um, best Cameron Worth post of the year, well, we decided that, I so say we decided that. We did design yeah, this one. We did decide, it was a uh, Lionel awesome. Sanders fanboy, that was, quite good, wasn't it? A lot of his uh, love for Lionel there. And then uh, the Balls of Steel, which went to Rudy Von Burr for his descent at the Ironman 70.3 World Championships. Which was very impressive, but you did bring up about Sarah True, and someone did actually come in here. Odious Ajar has said, Fraser is right, Sarah True wins the Balls of Steel award. She yeah, did. she was impressive last Pretty year. Pretty gutsy, yeah. Her tenacity coming back and back and back. So well done, Sarah. Hopefully 2020 is a bit better for you when you get to Kona. Definitely, and whilst we're talking about winners, we may as well go on to the Park Tool giveaway now, and this is a pretty apt prize for this time of year because this is the Park Tool Wash Bundle. Um, and we, we announced this back at the end of 2019. So here are the winners. It's a pretty cool prize. First one, first person is Michael Lecouver. 
I think you've got that right. Uh, Daniel Church, I know Cullinan and Maxwell Randall. So congratulations to you. We'll be in touch and get them out to you ASAP. Right, now into our try news and I'm going to kick off with a fairly apt bit of news for this time of year given that a lot of us are hiding away in the warmth of our home to do our training indoors. And this bit comes from Zwift. It was actually announced just as we went into the new year so I guess this was its last new course edition for 2019 and that was a 400 meter track. Yeah, now this track is called the Mayfield which is named after one of the Zwift co-founders, John Mayfield. And our guess is that Zwift have maybe been hanging on to this title for a uh, track for quite some time and they've managed to pull it out right now at the appropriate time. Yeah, and this track is um, situated within the Watopia world and actually the tra you can find the track within Watopia just alongside or adjacent to the Ocean Boulevard. Um, and actually, each time you go round on the track, you have the option of popping off or popping onto. So it's not like you literally stuck on, stuck on the track, yeah. Heavens forbid. <laughs> um, I mean, but it does look like a pretty cool track that they've designed there is kind of raised up on concrete out of the ocean and it is just sort of a kind of go-to space for athletes to kind of maybe based on muscle beach type idea flex your muscles and kind of look like you're on your training routine isn't it yeah it's quite a cool concept i think it's a really good idea actually I and mean, actually maybe quite fun to organize group yes. run workouts we can all get there you can make set a time to meet up and do like you know normal yeah like a tuesday track. thursday night club running session it could get packed down there this is <laughs> yeah. gonna be fun well anyway we've also noticed that challenge have restructured their management and they have actually moved their headquarters to almere in the netherlands now, three of Challenge's senior management team actually grew up with triathlon in Almere and they went back to do the race in 2012 and we're really saddened to see that there was actually only 500 people doing the half distance race and full distance combined and they just felt that they were going to be able to give that a bit of an injection. Yeah, and the three of them have actually managed to make Challenge Almere one of Europe's most successful and largest triathlon events. It now attracts somewhere around 3,500 athletes. It's um, hosted the ETU Championship seven times mm. and actually this year is going to host the ITU World Multi-Sport Championships yep. in September. Um, so this is all probably contributed to the whole repositioning of the headquarters to Almir. Yeah, it's interesting. And another thing that is quite interesting and caught our eye is that Challenge Roth this year, 2020, have just announced that both Jan Frodeno and Anne Haug Defending Ironman Hawaii champions will be racing in Roth at the same time. Now that, I don't think that has happened before where the existing male and female Ironman champions have been at Challenge Roth. So who knows, I think we could see if not one but both records falling. That's going to be exciting, isn't it? And we have also heard in the news recently that Edmonton plan to build an indoor triathlon centre. So this centre in Edmonton is going to comprise of a 250 metre indoor standard cycling track, I guess you could say, but also quite interestingly, a 400 metre indoor running track. Now that's pretty big for an indoor running track, so that's a heck of a lot of space. Mm -hmm. And this is all going to be connected to the existing indoor swimming pool, Peter Hemingway, Hemingway Fitness Centre, I believe it's called. But I can only presume that this is all necessitated by the fact that they have such long and hard winters in that part of Canada. Well, they also apparently have over 5,000 active triathletes in in that local community and not only the weather but also just they just apparently struggle to find areas and places to do their training so it sounds like this is very much needed and will be quite exciting for them. Did my very first major championships in Edmonton, yeah, World but, Junior Championships. It's very active for Yeah and there's reason. often been, there's been a World Cup there for pretty much 20 years now hasn't there? Yeah. In fact the grand final will be there this year. There we go. I think. <laughs> yeah, but talking about major races and prize money and such, the Challenge family have just announced their winners of their year-ending prize fund for their top-ranked athletes. And that was Belgium's Peter Hemrick. He took the win, which is a cool 30,000 euros. So you can see why athletes were giving this a good go. And then on the women's side of racing, it was Czech Republic's Radka Kalfelt who took that top spot. Uh, payments went down to fifth, so... 
good amount of prize money there for athletes to get their hands on. And people said there's no money in triathlon, eh? Um, but no, very well done to them all. Um, also, just finishing off with a little bit of race news because we had the first ever ITU Winter Triathlon World Cup, and this took place in the Chinese city of Harbin. Now, I'm just going to read off the distances here because we had a 6.8 kilometer run, a 12.5 kilometer mountain bike, and a 10.3 kilometer cross country ski, which Sounds amazing, yeah. but these athletes are flipping amazing, so there'd be a really high level of racing there. Um, it was seven-time reigning world champion Pavel Andreev that clinched a victory in the men's race, and then we also had the current world champion Daria Rogazina, who won the women's race, and now actually their attention will turn towards the um, IT Winter World Championships that are taking place in Italy in February. Exciting. Well, moving on now, it is almost coming to the end of the Zwift Triathlon Academy. Well, not the end of the Academy full stop, but the end of the period when you can apply for it and wrap up all the activities that you need to submit to be eligible for it. Yeah, and as a recap, this is an opportunity to be one of six selected athletes onto the Zwift Triathlon Academy team. And each of those athletes they're selected on is treated like a rock star. They get full support from Zwift. They'll go to Morgan Hill to the uh, to the wind tunnel at the specialized headquarters be given a lot of fancy new kit i mean this is a seriously cool opportunity and there's just a few days left to complete all the necessary workouts and races as fraser mentioned the deadline is the 12th of january and our very own Heather from GTN is cramming in her very last workouts. Yeah, I know, I've totally crammed this in. And it's not ideal, but for the two months that we had to complete all these sessions, it's just been bad timing because I've had two two-week holidays and um, a GTN shoot away. So it's meant that things have got a little bit tight for time. But on the plus side, I've pretty much got all my bike stuff done. So it's just a matter of cramming and running in. I had a bit of a running niggle um, earlier in the year, well, I say at the end of last year, and then Christmas as well. So now I have a week to get everything finished including the running race and I definitely wouldn't recommend doing this at home so hopefully you guys if you're doing it are more organized than I am but anyway I have just completed another run session so that leaves two run sessions and the running race to do by next week and anyway I'll bring you a report on the next week's GTN show because by then it will all be over and my hard work will be done hopefully and we'll do our very best to keep you updated on our social when I'm actually going to be doing some workouts and the run race so if you do want to come and join me and give me some support then and um, I would love that. But anyway, I will let you know how it's all gone next week. Right then, so now we're gonna take a little bit of time to look at the photos that you guys have sent in. And to start things off, just kind of apt for the start of the new, we've got a really cool story. It's a little, well, it's not actually a little, it's quite a big adventure, which uh, Tommy from Munich has sent us in. And I just thought this was a really brilliant story. He sent us a whole raft of pictures documenting his trip, which was from Munich all the way to Istanbul, which is a 1900 kilometer bike packing journey. And you've got a little bit more details on it, haven't well, you? Well, yeah, he's only 18 years old. Old. I mean, he covered, um, well, over 11,000 meters of altitude and 64,000 calories burnt. Um, and he said he's not doing triathlon as such at the moment, but um, was just inspired. He's been watching a lot of our YouTube stuff and just wanted to head off and do it. I mean, this. he did this all on his own. I mean, I, I'm trying to rack my brains of what I was doing on my own when I was 18. I, I don't, I was maybe going for a three hour bike ride if I was lucky and that would have been an adventure. It's amazing. Yeah, absolutely fair play. Um, the bike here, he's on a specialized Diverge, which is a lovely bike. I've, yeah, and he's got all the bike packing bits and pieces. It's really cool. It's really well set up. We've got the three bottles on the, the one under the actual um, down tube and everything, which um, I've never done before, but I've seen a lot of people doing for touring. I guess if you're just unsure how long it's going to be mm. between one stop and the next for getting liquid on board, it makes sense. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you, um, Tommy, if there's yeah, any like, little hacks you learn or things that work didn't work along the Was way. Was there any bits that were really quite nerve-wracking in the trip? Did, did, did you find yourself, did you have any bad mechanicals or anything? Well, yeah. he sent in a lot of photos. He saw a few treacherous snowy, moments yeah, where he's in the mud. Yeah, really bumpy looking road there that he's on. It's, it's a 10% descent by the looks of it. So all sorts of, uh, I mean, well, great adventure to yeah. take you through the new year. Well, our next photo is sent in from Alison, and this is um, from Vancouver in Canada, and this is her Live Brava SLR with SRAM Apex One group set. Um, but this is actually with the North Shore Mountains behind, and has said, the bike and me was very muddy um, at the end of this, uh, but the best couple of hours on the bike for early January in Canada. Oh, that so. looks amazing too. I mean, I've never been to that part of the world. It just sounds stunning. I think yeah. our 
friends over the side of the office at GMBN know all about the North Shore <laughs> riding there in Vancouver, don't they? Yeah. Maybe one day, friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next one sent in by Tim, and this is from Maine um, in America, and this is his Felt IA14 in his pain cave, and he says he's got GTN on the TV there, but you may notice in the background he's got a sauna. I did notice a door in the corner. I thought, that looks suspiciously like a well, sauna door at our swimming pool. Well, you know what? On, on first glance, I could see like a silhouette, and I thought maybe he's taking a photo with someone maybe naked in there. I was like, oh, good. But actually, it's just his reflection, so we're, we're okay. But um, it's a really impressive looking setup, so um, I don't think you've got any excuse. So you've got your treadmill up against the uh, the wall there to bring down if you need to, all sorts hopefully of Hopefully, not on the Swiss ball. Yeah, no, true, actually. <laughs> Um, next one sent in by Yannick, and he is showing off his rather familiar felt I Yeah, advanced. I thought you'd like this yeah. one. Um, I like to say maybe you just saw me ride it. Oh, that looks so cool. Mark rides it so well. I want that bike. But too. it's a nice story here that Yannick's in. He says, my first ever time trial bike, and I started triathlon two years ago and was getting better at all the disciplines, but still found myself getting passed by people riding past on triathlon specific bikes. So got a second job, saved up all his money. I mean, really little story. And look, he's got his dream bike and it is a bit of a weapon. Yeah, and he's hoping for his first podium in the new season. So yeah, awesome. Um, best of luck to you, Yannick. Yeah. And please do, all of you, keep sending in your photos using our photo uploader. That's on screen right now. You can find the link in the description below. Right now, time for the caption competition. And actually, we haven't done the caption competition for a few weeks now because- I actually am um, struggling to remember. <laughs> it, was, it was a few weeks ago. Well, yeah, it, we've been enjoying the festive period. So as we're going back a few shows here, so you may remember our photo from one of the Otolo swim run races. In Uto, I think it was, that rings mm -hmm. a bell. One of the yeah, bigger islands. The Otolo Uto. <laughs> a lot of vowels. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, very funny uh, photo with someone on their knee um, with a foot on there, almost like they're proposing. Um, so we've got some great captions coming in. William Robertson said, nope, not Cinderella. Uh, ben Hyard says, I never did learn how to tie my own shoes. <laughs> Owen Steer said, Take your time, mate. We've only been passed by four teams. And Len Whitrock has our winning caption. I'm going to let Mark read this out because oh. he read out very well in practice. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, the classic teammate proposal. Will you be my race partner for all races to come, for better or for worse, till crushing loss do us part? Sounds a bit familiar to, I don't know, Norseman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just joking. Oh, emotional Just times. Joking. Emotional. Uh, but yeah, uh, Len, you're the winner. Get in touch. We'll ping a cap out to you. But now on to this week's caption cop. And this this has got to be one of my favorite. We are starting 2020 off well, because this is from Ironman Bolton. Actually, not any time recently. This is back from like three years ago. Back to the archive for pictures. Um, and there's not many races going on at the moment, so we had to search um, for a while to find a good one, but this is fantastic. I mean, I've got lots of fond memories of Ironman and Bolton, but none of them um, involve having somebody's foot almost on top of my head. Well, this guy a... looks very happy, or unless it's well, you his did suggest foot. It might be it's his foot. Maybe he's really impressed at how flexible he is, and he's trying to show off like a bit like a dolphin. He's just like, look at me. Um, a cross between synchronized swimming and, I don't know, ballet or something. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, I've said in your captions Go wild. in the cop <laughs> in the comment section below. But that brings it to the end for this week's GTN show. Uh, we've got loads coming up this week. We've got a triathlon swim stroke video, we've got nutrition hacks, we've even got a video on VO2 max testing. Yeah, and let's not forget that we did talk about getting yourself motivated for the new year. Maybe you might need a little bit of new kit to get yourself out the door. So please pop over to the shop, have a look in there, see what's uh, maybe taking your fancy there. Yeah, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not doing so already, and hit that bell icon to notify you when a new video does come out. And if you'd like to find out how to train for a 70.3, you can see that by clicking just down here. And if you want to see a video that Mark did about how to get comfy in aero, well, you can get that here.